Well, Razorback fans, I did not get lost in Vegas, but my camera did. So it's been a few days, but we're back and better than ever. So let's talk some Razorback basketball on today's Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. I am your host, John Neighbors. I'm also the host of Out of Bounds. You can catch every weekday afternoon from 1 to 4 on 103.7 The Buzz and 103.7thebuzz.com. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Thursday, as I know that it's been too long. It's been way too long, but we're back. We're going to do this. We got a new camera. We're looking good, and we got basketball to talk about. And when it comes to reflecting on the Razorback basketball season, I, I've wanted to do this. I wanted to grade it out, but I know with uh, also, Nick Smith making his decision about the future of uh, his basketball career, as well as looking ahead to the next year. I felt like this was a, a perfect time to finally talk about it and finally get into it because, again, it's been too long. So let's just talk about it. Let's just talk about Arkansas and the season that they had and how it all went and just looking at it from the grand perspective of you know, what went right, what went wrong. Are you satisfied, dissatisfied? How do you feel about the future? You know, all of those things. And I'll say that when Arkansas lost to UConn in the Sweet 16, I was someone that was kind of like hurt. Not, not in a, like a majorly bad way, but just kind of like, man, I did not expect to get blown out like that. I did not expect the Razorbacks to just, from beginning to end, look completely and totally outmatched and outgunned against a UConn team that had some struggles this year and at times didn't look totally great. But at the end of the day, you just got to give them credit because – they were the ones that put it out there. They're the ones that got it done. But then when I got a chance there in Vegas to watch UConn take on Gonzaga and they beat Gonzaga worse than they did Arkansas, I was like, you know what? Maybe it was just running into a buzzsaw because UConn right now looks like the best team left in the Final Four. They were dismantling everybody in front of them. And sometimes you just got to tip your cap and say, man, that was great. That was just a great performance. But – it comes down to Arkansas and looking at this year where they finished 22 and 14 on the season. They did make it to another sweet 16 and it's almost like there's not anybody that's mad. And I don't think that there's really anybody that's sad or at least unsatisfied. There are people that may have wanted more or expected more just because of the preseason expectations that came along with everything which I would agree to the most part and for the most to the extent of how people feel. But at the end of the day, when we were looking back at the beginning of the season, what would be a good year or what I would think would be a really positive year for Arkansas, I always would go back and say, you know what, get to the tournament, see what happens in the NCAA tournament because you're good enough to go to a Final Four, but we know that anything can happen. And I felt that way, and I think most of you did too. And even after Arkansas lost to UConn, I still felt like Arkansas was a good enough team to make it to the Final Four. But as we know in the tournament, it's about matchups. It's about having a little bit of luck go your way. It's about you know making sure that you know everything looks and goes according to plan, to, and you can make it to the best of your ability to try to make that happen. But you got to the Sweet 16, you beat a number one overall seed, or the number one seed in Kansas, and I'm satisfied. I'm happy. Because it could have, or in some cases should have, gone a lot worse. This team in the regular season, we know what they went through. We know how injuries had issues, and this team blew leads left and right. There were so much frustrations pouring out from the team, from fans, where you just couldn't figure it out. You can even see it from us. You couldn't figure it out. Arkansas lost the final three games of the season in the regular season, lost their home finale against Kentucky. It, it, just nothing could be figured out about this team. Just like, what is this? What are we watching? What are we, what are we expecting here? Can this get better? And then going into the tournament, when you're limping in, you were a 10 seed in the SEC tournament, and then you became an 8 seed in the uh, NCAA tournament, and you're like, wow. Okay, well, you know, win, win a game, beat Illinois, and, you know, if you lose to Kansas, it is what it is. It won't be very fun, but, you know, hey, you're in the tournament, and at least you could win a game. But when you were able to pull off not only beating Illinois, but then beating Kansas and going to Vegas for the Sweet 16, it kind of nullified what all happened in the regular season, to me at least. Because when you get to that point, knowing how difficult it is to get to that point, 
and you pull it off and you look good doing it and people are talking about you and the job that you've done and the coach that you have in Eric Musselman and beating the defending champs in Kansas, that gives you that feeling of like, you know what, for all the strife, for all the trials and tribulations, this ended up being just fine. This ended up being just all right. Now, you need something to build upon. We'll talk about the future here in a little bit. But looking at some of the players, though, too, I think that it was one of those years where it could have been better, maybe should have been better, but I'm going to take it because I loved watching Anthony Black. Like He might be the one that I enjoyed watching the most, and I don't want to like do a send-off for each and every player that's going to be leaving Arkansas, or at least presumably leaving Arkansas, moving on with their careers or whatever it may be. But of all the players on this team, I'm going to miss Anthony Black the most because I think he's going to the NBA. Like he, I mean, it would be stupid not to. Think about what he did. He played every game this year. He played 35-plus minutes in almost every game this year. He was dealing with an injury to his knee. He was dealing with an injury to his ankle. He was dealing with the, the constant pressures of having to be the guy on the team that facilitates. He was having to be one of the best defenders. He was having to do so, so, so much. And he answered the call. He wasn't the greatest scorer or jump shooter, but I think a lot of his – nagging injuries had problems with that like I'm sorry you just can't jump as high or can't uh, be as good when you're sitting there you know holding your knee and having an ankle issue but it didn't matter the guy kept fighting he kept just going back and back and back and kept fighting and fighting and fighting and I respect that more than anything I respect that he knew he was going to be a lottery pick he knew that this was not going according to plan as they all thought it would with with the players he was going to be around but it didn't matter he kept fighting. And so I'm going to miss Anthony Black uh, for that reason alone. I think that, you know, what Devo was able to do this year and really up his game, and we know what he did against Kansas and be able to step up in the biggest spotlights and perform at the highest level, you know, it's just Devo in March. It's just Devo being Devo. And I love that. And I love the fact that he is always going to continue to bring it in every way that he can. I thought Ricky Council, you know, even though there may have been some ups and downs for him, but think about the performances that he was able to put in at times this year where he put, he put the team on his back. And against Kansas, I know Devo got a lot of love, but Ricky was one that made big shots and made big free throws. So just a few of those guys, and you're looking at them, and you're like, man, it was great. You know, Kamani Johnson, another one. Hey, hats off to you, man. I know your basketball career is done in college, but you were pivotal in a lot of the success that Arkansas had in some of their biggest wins, especially on neutral courts, whether it was in Maui or whether it was in the NCAA tournament. You were huge about it. So I say all of that, and I go through the grade, or the players and what I thought about them. I say all that just to really say this at the end of the day, because here's what it comes down to, folks. We all wanted more this year. We wanted more consistency. We wanted to see all the five-star players just show out in the way that we all thought. We wanted to see Trevin Brazil be healthy this year the entire time. We wanted to see some consistency. We wanted to see all the you know, accolades and all of the rankings that you got and everyone talking about you being this team. Like, we, we all wanted that. Of course we did. But when you look at it in the perspective of how it ended and what would the final result ended up being, I can't complain. I can't be upset. Because for the third straight year, you were the SEC team that made it the furthest. Now, the back-to-back -back Elite Eights, they were, you were the only one standing. And this year, hated to see Alabama lose as well as Tennessee lose. But you all finished in the Sweet 16. Now, you don't need to worry about what everybody else is doing. But my point is, is that even all that crap that you went through, after all of that nonsense and everyone putting Alabama on this pedestal of being the greatest basketball team in the country, and, man, they just got the easiest path, or you know, whoever else in the SEC, an A&M team that lost in the first round. You know, Tennessee, who looked like they had a great setup in playing FAU and making the next step. None of them did that. Those teams had their own struggles, but those teams, everyone expected to be better than what you were in the NCAA tournament, and they weren't. In fact, of all the teams in the SEC, you were the only one that had to overcome playing one of the best teams in the country in Kansas and winning. 
Alabama didn't have to do that. Tennessee didn't have to do that. A&M didn't have to do that. Auburn didn't have to do that. Kentucky didn't have to do that. I guess Auburn did be, have to play Houston, but they lost. But still, you beat them, though. You were the one that beat them. So I'm happy with that. And I'm happy with the way things are going. And I can't wait until next season. It can't get here fast enough. But we're going to have to discuss some things here in just a little bit about Nick Smith and his declaration to the NBA. But first, folks, I got to tell you about FanDuel. We know the tournaments are all going on still right now, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, FanDuel is giving new customers a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000, right, in bonus bets? You know what I'm saying? $1,000, $1,000. And it's all if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up today and claim your no-sweat first bet. Then you can wager on everything from the money line to point spreads to which team will be cutting down the net at the end of the day, and it's all on an app that's very safe, secure, and super easy to use. So don't miss your shot going and getting your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to sign up. Make every moment more with FanDuel. You are locked on Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so moving on into the next segment of the Locked On Razorbacks podcast, Nick Smith officially declares for the NBA draft in what was a very non-shocking move. Now, people are going to have their thoughts and opinions on Nick Smith. And we know that just being on this podcast alone – I have been one of the defenders of Nick Smith, especially with him coming back. But I don't think it's out of the, you know, out of the realm of, you know, appropriateness, I guess is the way you want to put it, to say that everyone, including Nick Smith, was hoping that the year could have gone a lot better than what it did. I think everybody was hoping for that. I wanted it, you wanted it, Nick Smith wanted it, his people wanted it, Musk wanted it. Everybody wanted it to be different. But unfortunately, it was what it was. And Nick Smith put out this message, and I'm going to read it verbatim so that way there's no misconstrued of the message, but he went on social media and just says, Dear Arkansas, this year has been an incredible journey, and I am grateful for all the love and support that I have received from my hometown and all the Hog fans. I want to express my gratitude to my coach, Muss, and the entire coaching staff who believed in my abilities and allowed me to the chance to play for Arkansas. To my teammates who have been through me through the highs and lows of this season, thank you for your support and your camaraderie. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and I love you, brothers, for life. To my family and loved ones, especially my mother, my father, my brother, and my sister, I'm so grateful for your unwavering support and sacrifice. That said, I am excited to announce that I'll be declaring for the 2023 NBA Draft. Watch this. Nick Smith Jr. So, uh, yeah, he puts it out there, and he's going to be moving on. And it's no surprise to anybody at all, at least it shouldn't be to you, that he's going to be moving on. And, you know, we talked about reflecting on the season and reflecting on particular players and, and what they did or what they didn't do, and whether it was good or bad, you know, any, whatever. Whatever the stuff you want to bring up, however you want to bring it up. But my opinion on Nick Smith is that he was a player that maybe just because of injury, because of the pressures, because of the people that were around him, because of all the things that, like, you had different voices going on all the time. I, just all the stuff that you could possibly think about going on in this kid, that this kid had to deal with, it made it extremely frustrating for him this year, just like everybody else. But at the end of the day, he wanted to play for Arkansas. He wanted to be a Razorback. That's a fact, and it's undeniable. And I did a podcast on this a few weeks ago when he came back. And I said, everybody in Arkansas owes Nick Smith a big thank you for coming back because he didn't have to. Now, he struggled at times. He didn't perform the best uh, in the NCAA tournament at times. Like, I get all of that. Throw that aside, though. Think about just the perspective of what he was able to do and bring to the table by being at Arkansas. Again, he didn't, he didn't, he could have left, but he didn't. He came in, tried to do the things the best of his ability. He didn't. When he saw Devo and Council doing such a great job against Kansas and he was struggling, he went on the bench 
And when it was the game was over, when the game was about to be in hand, and Debo had to come out of the game, Nick Smith went in there, and he just did everything he could. He didn't try to take away from the game. He didn't try. To, he let the game come to him. And even in the locker room after the game, which you know we got a chance to see after that Kansas game, seeing the excitement, the emotions, seeing Nick Smith and being extremely emotional after that game was, you know, it's just one of those things. It's just like man. You know, forget forget the stuff. Forget about the expectations and the pressure and all. If he played or didn't play or anything like that, just think about you like seeing that and knowing what it meant, knowing how much he enjoyed just being in that position by beating Kansas, being on the team that beat Kansas, and then being able to go to that next step. He wanted it. He wanted it bad. And you know, for the first time in his career, or at least most of the time in his career. As a basketball player, you got to think about this too, folks. There's never been a time where Nick Smith was not the best player on the team. There's never been a time. There's never been a time where a team had success or was able to win a big game despite Nick Smith. There was never a time in his basketball career where he's had to kind of step aside and let that happen. Ever. And this time, he did. He let it happen. It's kind of a tough thing to try to process. But his reaction wasn't bitterness or pouting or sitting in his locker with a towel on his head, just mad that everybody else had better games than what he did. And he's just, you know, no one's talking about him. It had nothing to do with that. He was excited. He was emotional. And he was happy about what the team was able to accomplish this year. Now, you can disagree. You can have your own take on Nick Smith. and I'm not going to force anything on you. But when it comes to what I believe and what I think, Nick Smith deserves a lot of credit. And I wish him nothing but the best of luck at the next level. I hope that he balls out in the NBA. I hope that he becomes a superstar because one thing that you know about Nick is that he will always remember Arkansas. And he could have gone anywhere else in the country, but he came to Arkansas. He could have left in the middle of the season, but he stuck with Arkansas. Say what you want about it, but the kid was Arkansas. All Arkansas from beginning to end. And because of that, he has my respect. We'll talk about next year and what it's looking like and who I think are some of the players that are going to come back or possibly not come back here on the other side of the break. So stay with us on the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. You are Locked On Razorbacks, your daily podcast on the Arkansas Razorbacks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, so let's talk about it next year i don't know who all is coming back and who for sure is another than nick smith at the time of this recording that's the only one that's confirmed him and kamani johnson are the only ones that are officially moving on at the time of the recording of this podcast but i do believe that there are some assumptions that we can make respectfully of who's going to be going who's going to be staying and you know uh, who might be entering into the transfer portal that could be a fact so you got kamani and nick smith gone too for sure anthony black Folks, to me, he's gone. Like, he needs to. Uh, He's going to be gone. I believe Ricky Council is gone. I think he's going to move on with his career. Try hand at the pros maybe, but I don't think he plays at Arkansas next year. That's just my assumption. That's my gut feeling. And then you start getting into some of the players that it's like, I don't know. Like, I don't have a gut feeling. I could see it one way or the other. But I do – I'm going to make some reckless assumptions here. I could be totally wrong. And if I'm wrong, I'm sure you guys are all going to let me know about it. But these are going to be my reckless assumptions for what this team is going to look like next year. Basing it off just my gut feeling. I believe that Jordan Walsh comes back to Arkansas. I believe that. If you listen to his uh, press conference that he had there in Vegas and uh, after the game against UConn, he really made it sound like he was coming back for another year. I think he comes back. I think Trevin Brazil comes back. After suffering the season-ending injury, I think he's going to come back and he's going to be a great player for Arkansas. I was feeling strong about Devo Davis coming back. But here recently, I've been getting some chatter that maybe not. He might be moving on. That's a 50-50 ball. And, man, I hope Devo comes back. I would love to have Devo back, finish out his career strong, and next year possibly be able to finally be the part of the team that gets back to the Final Four Muss loves him. He loves Muss. I wish him nothing but the best if he decides to move on. But, man, oh, man, would I love to have Devo Davis back for another year. Would love that. So, at this point, we'll just say that – we'll just say he's coming back. Because, again, we don't 
know one way or the other, so we'll just assume he's coming back. So Walsh, Brazil, and Devo, if you get those three guys back, that's an incredible core group to be able to build around with some of the new players coming in. That's great because you know you have Bayfall coming in, the McDonald's All-American, and then you also have Layden Blocker, who is a guard, who's a you know five-star player, high-caliber guy. And then you know Muss is going to be hitting that transfer portal like crazy. Now, Jalen Graham, I would think he would move on. Just, again, my reckless assumption, I think he would move on. I think the Mitchell twins would move on. I know, I think like they want to come back, but, you know, does Muss and the staff, does they have a spot for him next year? They feel like they could fit in next year? Don't really know, but I feel like they would move on. And then you got like the three freshmen that were riding the bench, the uh, Arkansas kids with Darian Ford and Joseph Pinion, then Barry Dunning. There's no way all three of those guys stay. I would even say two of the three probably end up hitting the portal. I don't know which one specifically, but I would say two out of the three end up hitting the portal. So that's essentially what you're kind of looking at is you could return four or five guys. You got two incoming freshmen, so that's you know six, seven players. And then you just hit the portal, get you some bigs and get you some shooters, because I think that's really what Muss is going to target. Also get you a point guard, a distributor. Uh, I would, and, and here's the thing, like I, obviously Anthony Black would be great if he's coming back, but he's not. But you don't have to go and get an Anthony Black type player. You know the type of player that I would love to have, and I think uh, Arkansas has been missing it for the past couple of seasons? A Jalen Tate. Y'all remember Jalen Tate, that first Elite Eight run? He was exactly what a Muss point guard needed to be. Tall, defense, energy, effort. He could distribute. He could shoot when he needed to. Like He wasn't the best shooter ever, but he could shoot threes. He could hit free throws. He hit some clutch free throws at times. And the dude was extremely coachable. Like, that's the type of point guard I want to see. Now, obviously, there's, you know, it's easier said than done to do something like that. But that's kind of what I'm hoping they go through. They get a shooter. They get a big man that can be really great defensively. And then they have uh, a point guard that can be able to facilitate and play great defense. If you do, if you get those three guys, those three types of players, and then Devo and Walsh and Brazil come back, you add in the true freshman couple other guys here and there, or maybe some guys in the freshman side of things develop another year. I like that. I think that's a great starting point. I think that's something that Arkansas could really build upon. But I'm excited for next year. I'm excited about it. I can't wait for it to get started. I know we got a long time left, but, oh, man, it just feels good to, once again, be one of the best SEC teams for the third straight year and not have to hear the chirping from all those other SEC teams that, oh, man, really? Auburn? hate that you guys lost in the second round Bama wow what happened best team ever huh wow good job good job still can't make it to the elite eight Tennessee Missouri Missouri biggest rivals you have are 15 seeds in the NCAA tournaments my people over there like come on you can't beat those 15 seeds it sucks it sucks Kentucky goodness all that money that big time Cal guy Still can't find any sort of way to make it into the second weekend. Hate that for you all. God, it feels good to say that. Appreciate everybody listening in to the Locked On Razorbacks podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or on Google Play. You can also get after me on Twitter at BuzzJohnNeighbors for any questions, comments, concerns that you may have. We'll keep it going from there. Same podcast time, same podcast channel tomorrow afternoon. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you then.